In this video I will show you how to draw dimensioning chains um, in 3D Studio Max like in 3D programs. This feature is a part of uh, the workspace Digitales and Werfen. You can download it uh, from the internet page designstrategies.org. Um, the, the plugin is based on um, a plugin of Boris Love Petrov and it's nicely reworked uh, by Kostadin, Kotev and uh, thanks a lot. You can see that I already do some dimensioning lines and uh, if you draw dimensioning lines or dimensioning chains they, uh, they will be stored in one uh, layer, the DMaster dimensioning layer. You can just see it in my layer manager. If I just select all my files then I can just delete this. This is the toolbar of Digitalis in Werven and you can see uh, all the features of uh, my dimensioning tools. If you just select everything uh, then you can just go and just say delete DMaster and you just see that only my dimensioning chains are deleted and everything stays. Okay, let's start. First I will show you uh, the really basic settings. Uh, I just draw a little bit like a three-dimensional floor plan. You can just see uh, this kind of object and we will play with this. And uh, I just go into my top view and I just use my uh, create multiple horizontal or vertical dim lines. Uh, I just um, choose this and what it does, I can just go to uh, the first vertex point of my object and move to the right uh, direction and click and click another time and if I want to finish this dimension uh, in chain I just right mouse click and finished my tool. After I created it I can move it up and down you can see it like this and it uh, doesn't matter uh, which point uh, you choose you can always uh, create a horizontal or vertical line. I'll just do it again and uh, I click uh, this point, I click this point, I click this, this and this. I just close it with right mouse click and I just move it up and you can just see that it's again a straight horizontal line. You can also do this in vertical direction. I just go again here and just click this point and I just click this point and now you created a vertical dim line. I can just do it again and um, uh, for example also want to uh, uh, take the other parts and uh, finish with right mouse click, move it like this and uh, uh, you can see that I created a vertical line. When you draw a dim line it's really important in which direction you move uh, the mouse at the beginning. For example if I want to draw um, a vertical line and I do my first click here and I move it a little bit to the right. This already means I want to draw a horizontal line. If I then change my mind and go uh, down, then you can see that it still draws um, a vertical line. So uh, this is really important that you don't make this uh, don't make this mistake. So I just select it again and I just uh, say. Uh, delete master dim line. So always see that uh, when you, uh, you draw your first line that the first impulse of your mouse goes into the direction you actually want to draw. If I want to draw a vertical line on uh, the left side I just have to click uh, the other way around. I don't start from the top, I just start from the bottom. I have my first mouse click and um, for example here my second one and my third one and my fourth one and my fifth one and if I cl um, close with right mouse click you can just see that it just moves to the outside and um, um, this is the way you can draw in all directions your uh, dim lines. If you don't want the dim line to become um, a straight a horizontal or vertical line, you just have to hold your um, control key. You can also see with the mouse over this explanation. I just go again and just say create dim line. I hold my control key and I just click again and now you can see that it doesn't go to a straight line. It just goes up and down and just follows um, uh, follows my uh, my mouse clicks. Okay, I select them again and just say I want to leave this guys and this one too. By the way, 
if you select uh, uh, the, um, the number, you can also delete your dim line. It doesn't matter if you select the number or if you just select the actual dim line. What you can also do, you can just uh, create or measure the angles. Just go into angle and just click the center of the angle and now uh, the second point and uh, the third point and you can just see that it creates an angle or just shows you an angle of 90 degrees. You can also show other information. For example, if I just select this object and I just go into node, I can click off this object and you can just see that it just shows, uh, for example, the surface area of the whole object. And if you just go into modify, you can um, change uh, the information you would like to uh, uh, to have. Now it's the surface area and uh, now it's the volume and uh, now it's uh, the dimensions in general x, y and uh, z and um, yeah, there are a lot of other information you can uh, just show if you use uh, your node function. I just changed between wireframe mode and default mode and you can also see that your um, your lines uh, have a color. At the end of the day, uh, they are editable uh, mesh objects. And uh, what you can also just do if you uh, choose a dim line, which you already do, uh, like this, uh, you can uh, just say uh, you want to move this dim line, and now you can move the created uh, dim line. Again, you choose this, and uh, you have the move dim line on and then you can move it. I can also just select uh, a number and uh, just uh, move this number uh, separately. Each dim line has a lot of options to um, uh, to adjust. Uh, you can only go to these options in your um, in the modify uh, tab if you switched off move dim line. If you did this and uh, choose a dim line, you can just see uh, all these uh, options. Uh, first of all, you can say select parent. If you have selected parent, uh, parent then you can move again the whole chain. Um, if I just go into one uh, chain again. Then you can also see there are many other options. I don't want to get too much into uh, details, but uh, what you can also, for example, do uh, also change the type of um, uh, the type of um, your dim line and just choose um, the long one so you can see it a little bit better. For example, this one and you just now have inside or outside arrows and uh, just choose it again and uh, many other options. You can adjust all these little things. Uh, I don't want to go into detail. Like I already said, you can change the size of the font and just say this is uh, uh, this size a little bit bigger. You can change the position. You can uh, see if you want to have the prefix and uh, just write something in front of this. Uh, for example, like a DE or whatever kind of things or, or text. Uh, you can show um, the units and um, and uh, you can change uh, the color and uh, to whatever kind of uh, uh, color you would like to have uh, your dim line. Just because there are so many options uh, to adjust, uh, we already prepared um, some uh, presets. If you just open the Dim Master Utility Floater, then you just can see you have the DE Preference Objects, uh, for example, Black, and I can just say Apply to All Dim Objects. And you can just see that the all changes to black or you just want to have objects black with units. And now you can see that it also um, adds uh, centimeters or you just want to have this in, uh, uh, in white and again with uh, white units. For example, you work in an architectural scale and uh, you want to have a different size of your dim, dim lines. You just choose the bigger size for uh, architectural scale and uh, it doesn't work with the small objects like this. Uh, this is probably already quite handy and if you want to um, save your own dim lines you just uh, create these parts and you can just save this as, um, as a preference. You just select your new uh, dim line and then just save your dim line settings and you can also then uh, change new preferences if you want to.
It doesn't matter if you use your dim line tool for top view or for example uh, also for front view or even for your perspective. If I just go into front view and uh, I just want to use my dim line here, you can just see that also this works properly. Uh, number one, two, and I just follow uh, the line and just uh, finish it. And uh, here are your dim lines. Uh, it's the same thing in uh, perspective. I just select all my dim lines and uh, delete them to have a better uh, uh, have a better view. I just go into my perspective. And uh, this is my object. And also here I can just uh, draw dim lines. The only thing which does not work is that it creates a clear vertical line. You can just see what uh, what is happening if I draw in perspective. This is my first point. Uh, next, it's my second point. It automatically recognizes uh, the um, um, which kind of perspective I'm using, and it just adjusts it uh, to uh, to my perspective. Next, this one, this one, and uh, this one, and uh, this one. And the very handy tool is that you can immediately uh, can are able to make a visualization out of this. If I just go into um, isolate isolate selection toggle off. Uh, then you can see that this is already um, a 3D scene uh, prepared for visualization. I just go into my render setup and um, yeah, start my first uh, visualization. And here we go. This is what it looks like. I used the setting white. The lines don't look white because of my lighting settings. If you really want to have it light, you should uh, give these uh, dim lines a glowing material that they really glow light. If I just uh, choose black lines, uh, for example, also with my dimensions, this is what it looks like in perspective. And I do the same thing in my um, top view. Uh, I just select all my objects, I select all my objects in my scene and just say delete dim lines and all the dim lines will be uh, deleted. I go again into my uh, top view and um, go into my wireframe mode so I can see it a little bit better and I quickly uh, create some dim lines, one, two, three, four, somehow like this and I finish this and I just go here in this direction somehow like this and right mouse click finish it and we just look at this uh, what this looks like in uh, my floor plane. Okay this is what it looks like if you just do it in a top view and uh, this is what it looks like if you also go a little bit more into a perspective top view. There are very few changes uh, I made. This uh, degree number didn't look like this before. I'll just show you what I did and uh, this I just did adjusted by hand so uh, they have a little bit more space. If I just go into my top view uh, and select the 90, the number of my degrees, like this. Uh, what I did, um, I first deselect my move dim line to be able to adjust it uh, properly. And uh, this is my number. So this is my uh, object and I just uh, used uh, flip text horizontally and flip text vertically. This is what it looked like before and I just had to turn my text and I just moved it a little bit closer to my uh, uh, to my angle. Before we look at the other features I would like to show you one thing. I just select all my dim lines again and just say uh, delete dim line. Here's one feature which is probably also quite handy, but I would not use it on a regular basis. It's uh, toggle attaching the dim line objects. If I just switch it on and just go into my dim line and uh, I just draw my dim lines somewhere like this and uh, um, deselected, you can just see that it does not do the horizontal line anymore. That's uh, the disadvantage, but what it also does is if I go to my basic object and I just go into vertex points and I just move these vertex points, then you can just see that uh, my dim line is just following my, uh, my objects and obviously um, this also uh, works in uh, 3D and I just um, 
go into my uh, 3D and you can just see that my dim line is uh, connected to the objects and if I just draw a new dim line for example like this from here to there just finish it and go again into my basic objects vertex points and I just move the word vertex points up and down you can just see that it follows the dim line the disadvantage is uh, like I already said it doesn't uh, put it straight, it just uh, draws one dim line after the other without uh, having, them, uh, having them in a straight uh, chain. There's one, uh, one button which could be handy if you just uh, want to uh, be a little bit more into all these details of these uh, adjustments. It's the help button. If you uh, press help button first time, uh, it just shows you uh, that um, asks you if you really want to open this help button and it could be that your help looks like this this means nothing is inside which is actually not true what you have to do is you just have to go uh, on to uh, your uh, hard drive C you just go into 3ds max dim master and there's this dim master uh, help file right mouse click and uh, go into properties and here you just have to say you would like to allow that you are able to watch all these things in this uh, help file and if I just close it and I just go in my help again then you can just see that uh, you find uh, the help file it's not um, everything inside which is uh, which uh, I showed you but some basic things you can still uh, uh, find and probably uh, uh, get a little bit closer into the details Another part of the workspace uh, Digitalis and Werfen is uh, the sectioning tool. And the sectioning tool uh, does much more than the slice modifier. Uh, I just uh, use it right now. I just go into create uh, sectioning and uh, you can define the height of the sectioning. This terms is a really small object. So I just go into uh, the height of 30 centimeters. It automatically groups uh, everything. You can uh, change uh, the height of the uh, slice. You can just see it here in my uh, uh, perspective uh, camera. You can uh, change uh, the direction and uh, just have a vertical slice or you just change it in uh, X direction and uh, these are things you can uh, uh, you can do. Um, if you leave the slice modifier, it's just right now a group, uh, then you automatically ungroup it. You can just go into ungroup or you just close it and it just asks you, do you want to ungroup? Yes, I would like to ungroup and then you already ungroup this. And that's also a really nice way of uh, how to create um, uh, uh, sectionings and also how to have uh, uh, three-dimensional perspective uh, sectionings. The full potential of sectioning tool you get if you work with a more complex scene like this with lights, with cameras, with helpers and you just select everything. You just go into the sectioning tool and just say you want to group and run and it just asks you the assemble groups and do you want to detach assembly first. I just say yes, it's just calculating and then there's the next question, uh, would you like to make them uh, unique uh, or not? Uh, to remove them from the group, I just say yes, yes, I want to make them unique. And then it says the reference object to the scene, please remove them from uh, the selection manually. And uh, yes, I would like to remove them. And here are some things uh, which I can't uh, use for my uh, uh, sectioning. I just go into, um, into edit and uh, just say select uh, inward and uh, go into uh, isolate selection and now I haven't uh, selected them anymore I just go into group and run and uh, it just takes some second and here we go a uh, really nice uh, sectioning and we just make it a little bit bigger in my uh, perspective and uh, now I can just move the height I just go into a height of five meters and uh, just take some seconds and now I have a sectioning in the height of five meters or I just swap uh, and go to a uh, y direction and uh, change uh, change the length in this terms and I go into uh, x direction and uh, recalculates and now I have the same section in here in uh, x direction and just change it a little bit uh, Somewhere, somewhere like this 
And if you finish, you just say ungroup or close it, and it just goes back to uh, to your final uh, to your final file. Another nice function is the export to DWG, AutoCAD or to um, Illustrator. And I just draw some dim lines again. And by the way, um, if I just draw uh, my dim lines, for example, uh, somewhere like, uh, like this, and you have the problem that uh, uh, here, uh, by mistake, it just goes into a horizontal direction, which you actually uh, uh, didn't want. I just select all of them again and uh, just delete them. Then you better just uh, zoom in a little bit and uh, if I just use my dim line now uh, then you can just see that it works uh, much better. For example like this, right mouse click and I just do it again in horizontal direction. I just zoom in a little bit and first click, second click and uh, now it works, uh, uh, works really well. Okay, let's export this to AutoCAD uh, DWG. I just select everything, string A, and uh, I go into my export tool, and uh, here I just uh, select uh, a save type. Sometimes uh, it just uh, goes to FPX or something, so I just enter DWG, and uh, here we go. First, it's saving the scene, and it just goes back to the basic scene, and next step, uh, I saved it to AutoCAD, so it's really important to, uh, before you do every, anything, save it before as a new file and uh, you have to wait some seconds until the export is finished. Uh, here we go. And here's my file uh, and I just open this in AutoCAD right now. Okay, I just open it. And uh, here we go. It always opens an uh, isometric view. If I just change my uh, view to uh, top view, uh, I'm just doing it right now, then you can see everything is there and also my dim lines uh, are there and you can work nicely with this. You can't change uh, the numbers anymore, they are set, but you can use it for layout and uh, things like this. If you want to export it to Illustrator, you also select everything, string A, and you just go into export and you just say uh, .re and just select uh, save type as Illustrator. And uh, here's one point, in Illustrator the maximum size of, of a drawing uh, can be uh, 5 by 5 meters. If you export something in the scale or one to one, this would be much too big for illustrators. So uh, the tool suggests you some uh, scalings, one to ten, or one to twenty, or one to one hundred. And I just go, for example, into a scale of one to one hundred. And now I say scale and export, and it's uh, scaling export. It always goes back to the initial file when I saved it last. So always save it before you export. That's really important. Uh, here we go. And here you can also see your um, Illustrator file. I just go into Illustrator and say uh, open and open my uh, file. And uh, this is actually what it looks like. Uh, just deselect it. You can also use different kind of uh, thicknesses. Uh, for example, just say 0 0.2 and um, this already looks, uh, looks much, uh, much better. 3DC always exports the top view whatever you do. So if you want to export it in a front view or in a perspective, you have to select all the objects in top view and uh, just stay in top view by the way and you have to turn the objects. Um, this is a little bit uh, um, not probably what you expected, but that's the only way uh, in how to uh, how to get a perspective out of this or a front view. And if I, you did this, then you can just go again into export and just say uh, perspective, perspective and dot uh, re, and just go into save. It uh, uh, suggests again a different uh, kind of scalings. Uh, this times I take the 1 to 10. So have to wait some seconds. Uh, 1 to 10. Okay, I would like to do this. 
And this is what it looks like in Illustrator. You can still uh, change the thicknesses and just export it as a um, PDF or just integrate it into your layout. Thanks for watching.